Good afternoon. How are you? Good. Good. Wow. Right. So I will. Uh, what I want to do is to deliver you a message, and the message is: artificial intelligence will improve humanity and human rights. This is my main message. Artificial intelligence is no more considered science fiction, and the main reason for this shift from various AI research disciplines into an our way of applied cognitive businesses is due to data explosion, technology, and hardware improvements. So AI and increasingly complex algorithms currently influence our lives, our civilization, more than ever, <coughs> believe me. And I'm convinced that it will change the humanity. So I have different options for you to introduce you to AI and how it will change humanity. Option number one, it's by showing images like this. So I see some smiles. You should be very afraid. <laughs> oh, you are not. <laughs> Please be afraid. <laughs> so this is science fiction. Definitively. Option number two, I can show images like this, and I can tell you a story, a beautiful story, and say to you, look at the robots. They look nice, they are well designed, they have beautiful eyes, they are beautiful. <clears throat> but what are their real intention? <laughs> you should be afraid. <laughs> So this is definitely science fiction. And I don't know why, but we like these stories. Look at the newspapers every day. Some bad news, conflicts, hypotheses, the cow. But you in the room, and I think 99.9% .9 of these people in this world, they want a better world. They want to improve rights in the workplace. They want to have access to health care. They want to, to, to improve education, economic, social, cultural rights as well. No? No? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and AI will help us with that. They will help us in our jobs, the way we do tasks, but most important, they will allow us to focus on what really matters for us. Human relationships. Human experiences. It will give us the time and freedom to develop our creativity. And when I speak about human experiences, and user experiences, we can speak about uh, one of the most powerful concepts that Mahatma Gandhi had talked about the concept of antiodaya, which means focusing on the benefits to the very last person in a line or a society. When you make a decision, when you must make a decision, what will be the impact of this decision on the very last person? And are our decisions regarding AI will impact positively the end user. A boy in a hospital, a girl at school, how it will impact. So I will give you a personal example. But just before that, let me define what is a human experience. Is this a human experience? Yes. No. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no. This is a technology to make coffee. Yeah, almost. Here you go. This is a human experience. The pleasure to drink coffee. It's not exactly the same. So I can take a coffee pot and throw it to you. 
or even fight with the coffee pot. But no, the technology is to make coffee and then the human experience is to drink the coffee and the pleasure to drink coffee. Is this a human experience? <laughs> right. <laughs> this is clearly not a human experience. And specifically when you have to treat pediatric patients. It's art. It's a technology to, break, to make images. This is a human experience. And specifically for pediatric patients. And we can apply all these concepts in many industries. So, if, for example, if you take the dog food industry, they have cutting edge uh, uh, R&D, beautiful technology, and they are doing very well, providing good food uh, with all the necessary vitamins for the dog. But at the end of the day, <laughs> is the end user happy? So now imagine all the opportunities we have if we have a technology that can interact with the end user through natural language, a technology that can understand people, understand the end user, and transform human experience. And this is exactly what AI do. So here is my personal experience. She's my wife. So it's really personal. Um, I'm very proud of my wife. She's really an amazing girl, and I will tell you why. Uh, we have uh, been a couple uh, since many years, 11 years. <laughs> we have a wonderful daughter, seven years old. But she has a problem. She needs artificial intelligence. So just before, I will stop you just before you might think something wrong. She doesn't need artificial intelligence to replace me. Not yet. yet. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> good point. So far, so good. <laughs> no. She needs artificial for one specific point. She's a neurologist. And she, in a neurosurgery department in the south of France, in a French hospital, and she is dealing with pediatric and adult patients with movement disorders, and specifically a disease that is called dystonia. Dystonia is a neurological disorder uh, in which patients often have continuous pain, cramping, relentless muscle spasm due to involuntary muscle movements. It's a very tough and hard disease. And she is the most educated person I know in this world. She wakes up very early in the morning. She come back late at home with one single objective, is to improve the quality of life of her patients and fight this disease every day. And the problem is that she has to deal with tons of information, a huge amount of information. She has to deal with brain images, clinical records, biological records, feedback from patients, feedback from colleagues, to read medical books. I don't, I don't know if you have seen the, uh, the size of medical books. Uh, research papers, everything. It's a huge amount of information. She, and she spends a lot of time doing this. She's also a neuroscientist, so she's trying to understand the mechanism of action of, of this disease. So she has to read a lot of paper. So as a human, she's limiting in processing all this information. <coughs> Let me give you another example. 160,000 research publications are published each year related to cancer. If you take 15 minutes to read one paper, you will need around 40,000 hours per year to read these papers. Just to know, we only have less than 9,000 hours per year. Can you imagine the amount of information? And this is just one area. So she has to deal with a lot of information. And now we have gene sequencing. We have wearable devices, clinical trials, new drugs, millions and millions of images. So 
she really needs a technology that can analyze this kind of, uh, of, um, of unstructured data. <coughs> so this is a day where we can offer access to healthcare and to knowledge. And cognitive systems can be trained by the best doctors and can process like that tons of information. They can improve research. They can find new treatments. They can identify proteins and genes related to cancer. They can find new ways to treat patients. But how it works? Traditional computing is programmed. It's logic-based, logic-driven, rule-based. It's dependent on structured data, meaning like uh, two-dimensional tables, whereas artificial intelligence is probabilistic. So it means that it can understand natural language, put it on context, interpret, interact with humans, meaning reading a research paper, reading a book. They can see, and it's exactly what we call unstructured data, images, videos, and the same. Read them, understand them, and provide hypotheses, interpretation, and they can hear sounds. So they can unlock meaning because they can reason through it and giving us new insights to consider. They are self-learning. It's powerful, self-learning. They learn continually. They can challenge our expertise. So we can take more informed actions. And you know what? Certain AI algorithms already surpass experts in different fields. Already. But it doesn't mean that we will replace them. Not at all. We will provide them new insights, new information to take into account and to focus on what really matters. The patient and the relationship we can develop with the patient and a strong follow-up and a personalized treatment. This is what we speak about. And we can provide access to healthcare to anybody in the world. You imagine this? To anybody in the world, regardless of the location, we can access remotely to this knowledge. We can give access to knowledge. And what is the difference between artificial intelligence and the human brain? Because this is often a question. Artificial intelligence is machine learning, deep learning, detect weak signals, finding models, finding information, read natural language. It's unlimited capacity. And what is the human brain? Common sets, <coughs> morals, dilemma, compassion, dream, imagination, ethic, love, friendship. This is the human brain, and this is where AI can help us in improving humanity. And by the way, it will help my wife to take into account all the information she has and better treat the patient. And the question is, do we want our physician to take advantage of this information to help us stay healthy or deal with illnesses? The answer is yes. I, was, I, I would be very surprised if someone said, no, no, I don't. <laughs> no, no, I don't care. No, we want. We want to have access to healthcare and we can provide this to the world. So what about the future? There is a a possibility of a different world, a world with principles and uh, ethical development and use of AI. Uh, a lot of companies already have taken uh, uh, a clear position in governments. 
uh, for ethical and data protection. Uh, I am working for one of them. And uh, it's a future where the enormous power and potential of AI is designed for the good of humanity. It's a future where innovators across the world can leverage this technology to develop application for the good of humanity. In short, it's a technology in which human rights is the core design of AI. AI is built by humans, and they are shaped by humans' values. The code inside an artificial intelligence is a human opinion. It's shaped by humans. And we can do even more than that. When states signed the Universal Declaration of uh, Human Rights in 1948, they were not thinking only on the world they lived in today. They were thinking about the future. A world where that stands up for and protect human beings' dignity. And this is where we are today. We have to challenge ourselves to make the right decisions about artificial intelligence and leverage this technology to give access to healthcare, to knowledge, to education. And coming back to Gandhi, let's focus on the very last user, the end user. My, my wife will have time to process all this data and to focus on the patient. And by the way, my husband experience will be improved. She will come back earlier at home. <laughs> so my single message here is that we have the opportunity <coughs> and choice to improve humanity and human rights with artificial intelligence. Thank you very much. <laughs>